2009, a new major subway line stretching from north to south went online in Beijing. It was a fitting present offered to the Republic on its 60th birthday. On that day, exactly 40 years had passed since the opening of the first Beijing subway line, which runs beneath Chang'an Avenue. Today, old and new lines stretching across the city meet at a single point, Xidan Station. Xidan, Dungan, Fu Xingmen, and Jian Guomen were once the opposite ends of Chang'an Avenue. The four subway stations used to see only one subway line pass through. But after 40 years of construction, they are now all transfer stations. Now, people can reach Chang'an Avenue more easily from all directions of the city. In the early morning on Chang'an Avenue, the day has yet to break. But this main road, which runs from Shijingshan in the west to Tongzhou in the east, will soon greet busy commuters. Every day, millions of vehicles and passengers travel back and forth on this smooth, wide road. But although an endless stream of traffic flows along it, it remains in good order. And today, the 50-kilometer-long street is a stunning display of both Beijing's modernity and ease of travel. However, when looking back a century, we find that this street looks almost unrecognizable from its past. In 1909, after Pu Yi had been enthroned, the first year of Xuantong began. Although the hall of golden shines, the emperor's audience chamber was still as impressive as ever. This ancient nation was facing much the same challenges as the young emperor himself. Xiang, the Peking legation quarters to the south of Chang'an Avenue, had become a special dominion for foreigners under the Qingzhou Treaty, or the Boxer Protocol. Rickshaws and their Chinese runners continued to wait humbly on their foreign clients. This mode of travel was symbolic of the country's backwardness. The rickshaw runners, hunched over for hours on end, endured great hardship. The fact was, the residents had to watch their way very carefully. The trip seemed to be very long on this dirty and muddy road, and it was difficult to escape this life. This is a familiar sound to older Beijing natives. 86 years ago, a new vehicle began to appear on the streets. Clamors that the American soldiers had made when they occupied the area under the tower of Zhangyang Gate were heard no more. And the reason for this was the clear and somewhat pleasant sound of ten streetcars had replaced them. Gradually, the streetcars came to be known by a new name clanging cars. At that time, cars were a rare sight in the city. Only some prominent officials and the super rich could afford them. Even though the road wasn't wide, it was quite spacious. So after the streetcars came online, citizens began to enjoy a new experience traversing their city. They were not only cheap to ride, their speed was much faster than the rickshaws. Five years later, streetcars were put into operation and they soon became an integral part of Beijing's transportation network. At the time, there were five streetcar routes operating in Beijing, four of which went across Chang'an Avenue. At the time, the street from Dongdan to Xidan was only 3.8 kilometers long and 20 meters wide, yet it became Beijing's most thriving district. Industry at the time was relatively backward, so all the equipment used to build the streetcars was imported from abroad. But even after being assembled locally, they still looked a bit ragged and old. But the locals, 
soon grew to love the streetcars with their pigtails overhead and feet treading on the tracks. They became many people's favourite way to get to work.他开车是摇这个东西这大概是一个变电器好像是加压往上的我这么摇嘛就减速我这么摇嘛就加速就手摇这个东西不是电钮了前面要有人了他底下有这么大个铃的铃到上面呢有这么圆帽我很注意观察
people's months, a mechanic repairing street cars, experienced and witnessed the transition. Gurdo 三月九日，这一天大雪纷飞，有轨电车照样的跑动。可是今天是最后一天了，最后的乘客走下最后一班车，有轨电车开进了车库，结束了他在北京内城行驶了三十五年的历史。On the night of March the ninth, nineteen fifty-nine, workers began removing the tracks at full speed to prepare the roads for a large line of cars. Workers began removing the tracks at full speed to prepare the roads for a line of new vehicles. Workers began removing the tracks at full speed to prepare the roads for a line of new vehicles. Workers began removing the tracks at full speed to prepare the roads for a line of new vehicles. Workers began removing the tracks at full speed to prepare the roads for a line of new vehicles. Streetcar lines were also set up in succession along the roads. Just one night, Beijing's crucial transport network changed its appearance completely. Over the following seven years, Beijing saw its streetcars replaced by trackless cars and buses, and the clanging sounds faded into history. Fang'an Avenue itself was extended and lengthened from Jiangguoman to Fuxingmen. Stretching 6.7 kilometers long and 80 meters wide at its widest point. With the coming of new vehicles, the city and its roads took on a new look. However, in the late 1950s, a shortage of fuel meant that the new trackless cars had to be fitted with tanks on top filled with marsh gas. The public buses, which had great difficulty running, became an odd sight on Chang'an Avenue and remained in the minds of many for a long time. Shoutoran 1965, young Du Wenku and Wang Xinjie had just started their careers. Together with many others, they were waiting to accept a very tough task. In order to meet the challenges of a possible future war, Chairman Mao Zedong ordered that a subway line be built from the Western Mountains along Chang'an Avenue to Beijing Railway Station. It would be the first subway in New China. The subway had been planned years before, but had been delayed due to lack of funding.
Preparations for the construction of the subway began with great intensity. During this special historical period of the Republic, Chang'an Avenue was to witness the vigor of a city as well as a nation. From the day U-Train Road Station began construction, builders worked diligently to sketch the future look of Chang'an Avenue's underground. At that time, even technical experts went to the construction site to do manual work together with ordinary workers. The whole country was still facing an extreme shortage of supplies. Although Beijing subway was an important construction project, the workers had to endure living and working conditions that were tough. In this photo, we can see leaders from Beijing municipality and the central government inspecting the subway construction project. Those present included Zhu De, Deng Xiaoping and Peng Zhen. Their headquarters was nothing more than a simple shed propped up by straw and wood. I even under such harsh conditions, workers still harbored great enthusiasm towards what they were building. Even though a Russian textbook was the only professional book that the Chinese construction workers could find at the time. After conducting extensive research and numerous tests, with a newly imported mechanical technology, engineers managed to set up the framework of China's first-generation subway construction. It took four years to build the 23-kilometer long subway line. It was successfully completed on October the 1st, 1969. It was the only large-scale building project on Chang'an Avenue during the 10 years of the Cultural Revolution. In the following 20 years, Line 2, Line 13, Line 5 and Line 4 opened one after another. After many years of toiling underground, Beijing's subway network was expanded to a total length of more than 200 kilometers. Today, the subway offers a quick, convenient choice for travelers. Subway bus terminal is situated in eastern Beijing. Compared with other terminals, it has few extraordinary features. Its orderly appearance means that it might be taken for granted. Every day, these number one buses will depart from here and travel to Chang'an Avenue. Locals often call them the big number one buses. Bus driver Ma Qingchuan has worked on the big number one bus for 30 years. Every day, he drives his bus along Chang'an Avenue, going past its many important sections and landmarks. Stretching a distance of about 20 kilometers, the big number one bus has picked up countless passengers along this iconic street, witnessing decades of change. Today, the big number one bus 
still continues to play a key role for people traveling further out. It has made the people and the city and this long street friendlier and well connected. As it travels along the main street, its wheels might leave shallow traces that will be silently remembered by the road. seven months of designing, production, and testing, Beijing's old streetcars were brought back to life at a mall in Jinmen. After being absent for almost half a century, they had a new look. This car is... 从外观的颜色上，就是车身的上半身采用的米黄色，呃，下半身呢采用的是深红色，呃，比例关系呢基本上是达到一比一的这种关系，呃，从这个整体的这个布置，就是客室内的布置来说，司机室两边的司机室也是给呃原来的老的雨轨电车是比较吻合的。The historical scene on Chang'an Avenue is now brought back to life. From the birth of the streetcars in 1924 to their end in 1966, they lasted for 42 years. But whether it was a coincidence or done deliberately, Exactly 42 years later, this vehicle reappeared in Beijing. Thank you. 